40 ridiculed beliefs that turned out to be true according to reddit number 40 bernie sanders supporters regarding media collusion to keep his message off the air say what you will about his platform the party politics or his competitors but when they cried that media organizations weren't giving him a fair shakedown they were duly justified about their claims come july 22nd i think the only people who who really didn't know that uh, the mainstream media is painting a narrative and only wanted you to vote for certain people are old people, unfortunately. How do you not know that these uh, these, these corporations are, uh, are in the pocket of Hillary? When you see a Bernie Sanders victory speech get cut short on MSNBC, it's just so you can watch an empty Trump podium for 25 minutes, yeah. It shouldn't be that hard to see. This shit should be pretty transparent for everybody. Number 39. My parents told me to treat high school, or just school rather, like a job. I didn't and now I realize I could have gone to college for about $50,000 less um, if I'd actually tried in high school. Look at it that way and it's like you're making 15000 a year for school. Oh yeah? Number 38. The Onion. They predicted the Bush presidency right from the start. Bush, quote, our, our long national nightmare of peace and prosperity is finally over. Mm. My fellow Americans, Bush said, at long last, we have reached the end of the dark period in American history that will come to be known as the Clinton era. Eight long years characterized by unprecedented economic expansion, a sharp decrease in crime, and sustained peace overseas. The time has come to put all that behind us. Well, who would have thought that we'd end up with another fucking Clinton in, in office because she had the money and the power to make it happen? You know what I mean? It's when it's when your husband is, is the president and getting his dick sucked by some trollop and you know you're staying with him that you know that she she got some plans down the road and she got the money and the power to make it happen because hillary deserves to be president as far as she's concerned number 37 i don't want to play 10 years in the nba and then die of a heart attack at 40 said pistol pete oh my god who's pistol pete Apparently a basketball player. He was 25 years old when he gave Pennsylvania reporter Andy Nuzzo that quote. He died at 40 playing a three-on-three -three basketball game in Pasadena on January 5th, 1988. He played 10 years in the AM NBA. That's crazy as fuck. Number 36. The people who said Trump had a chance. Well, there you go. It's 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 your fault that Trump has a chance. <laughs> Somebody said I had this conversation with my sister the day Trump's candidacy candidacy was announced. Me. That's stupid. The guy's a glorified TV star. He has no political experience. He stands no chance. Sis, I don't know. People are pretty stupid. Me. The stuff he's saying doesn't even make sense. He's throwing away his money by entering the race. Nobody's going to vote for him. Sis, a lot of people are really stupid. I bet he gets at least 5% of the popular vote. Me, popular vote? You're aware he won't even win the nomination, right? He's not going to get 5% in the popular vote. That's huge, even if he goes third party. Sis, I think he'll get 5%. There's enough dumb people that will support him. Me, I bet you $5 he doesn't get 5% of the vote in the general election. Sis, deal. When we told our dad, he said, you just lost five dollars. And then he called the sister's name. The dad didn't believe it either, Stripes. Beautiful. Number 35. Everyone who thought that the subway guy always seemed a little off. Yeah, I guess everybody was white. Everybody was white. You see what white. I did there? Subway, eat everybody. white. <laughs> You're terrible. Oh, man. He diddled those kittles, though. Wait, who are we talking to? What is this in reference to? This is in reference to Jared, the guy who ate at Subway and lost a whole bunch of weight. But then he was actually a child molester. You don't know about that? Oh, I'm sorry that we were talking actual Subway. D 
comment what you want to, subscribers. You know, wh what do I say to Stripes? We talk An about actual it. actual subway. Like, everyone who thought the subway. Oh, the subway guy. Okay. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Somebody said I actually used to joke that he seemed like a child molester. Let's move on here. Number 34, the Dixie Chicks, mainly Natalie Maines, for stating an opinion that disagreed with their south of the Mason Dixon line fan base. They were basically bullied off most stars and bars radio shows, threatens and constantly harassed, all because one person didn't think our president was making the right decision about going to war. And they were right. Mm -hmm. But hey, man, you got to think about your fan base. You got to think about who the hell you're talking to. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. And when they're pop stars, you know what I mean? And they're basically, they're built on the backs of people giving them attention. They can't piss them off. Their song, Not Ready to Make Nice, was written as a reaction to the controversy over their statement. Aww. It's a shame that, you know, for speaking their minds... Um, even even if they were right and where they were coming from, they got berated for it. And I, I think this is going to get really sad towards the top of this list. So buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. Number 33, Greg LeMond. What? I'm not ready to get sad. 33, Greg LeMond, the Tour de France winner who accused Lance Armstrong of doping way before anyone believed it. Oh. Holy shit. It was pretty well known, someone says. Greg simply had the balls to state something publicly about it. And what happens? He became a complete pariah. He loses a multi-million dollar contract with Trek Bikes after they state that they want him to apologize for saying it and have the gall to state it was due to him calling out their main cash cow, Lance Armstrong. And if you don't believe Lance had a hand in it, you're an idiot. Not only that, but Greg doubled down and literally would confront Lance publicly on it a couple of times and even caught Lance on the phone telling him he would ruin him financially because he would not shut up about it. Meanwhile, he was disinvited to a past tour winner's dinner and celebration based on his tarnished image. Rumor has it Lance had his hand in that too. What a jerk. Then it all came out. Greg was white, right, and Lance was a lying scumbag. People are here are mourning the loss of Armstrong as a hero. Yeah, I suppose you can say that. But you, you know, there was one guy who stood by his principles and burned for it for years. But, but his soul is clean when he was turned out to be right. Greg Lamond is the hero here, folks. It's a shame that people will never get that kind of glory stripes because they were not like figuratively burned, but yeah. literally burned for their beliefs, which turned out to be right. Let me tell you something. All right. Yes. Especially with family, especially with family, obviously with people that you deal with in real life as well, but especially with family, you should live your life not wanting to argue and waste your own time and effort to convince some idiot who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about of what reality is do you know what i mean if somebody wants to feel something and interpret something from your actions or your words when in reality you didn't mean that if you say you didn't mean it and they don't want to accept it there's nowhere to go with it from there you know what i mean how they choose to interpret things is their fucking choice and the fact that we live in a world sometimes where figuring out what right and wrong is is as simple as you typing a phrase into Google. If they don't want to fucking know, if they don't want to be set straight, nothing you say to them is going to change that. And it's not worth your precious moments alive. Any of us could die at any time. The next minute isn't guaranteed to us. It doesn't need to be something that we do. Stray bullet could fall out of the sky. Satellite could come crashing down. Comet. Car could come veering into your fucking house. Brain aneurysm. You know what I'm talking about? Heart attack. You don't need to waste your time trying to convince some idiot who's wrong that they're right. I'm not saying that you shouldn't stand up for yourself. You should never, you know, allow yourself to be treated like a doormat. However, you know what I mean? If some certain situations present an opportunity for you to walk away, other than try to live your life convincing someone of some shit, let them die in the wrong, nigga. Let it be something they come to the conclusion of on their death debt bed that they might have been wrong. You know what I mean? Because it's not worth your cells. It's not worth your blood pressure. It's not worth your time. It's not worth you. 
dude, especially when they wrong, my nigga. Especially when it's black and white, easy to prove. Fucking Google it, you dumb motherfucker. You know what I mean? This knowledge is like available to you and you refuse it. So it, it, it's almost like if a person doesn't want to learn, why are you going to waste time trying to teach them? That's where I'm coming from. Mm. So let everybody suck on that, Stripes. All I know is that if you joke hard enough, maybe you'll get in an episode of Arthur. If I weren't burning up where I'm recording right now, trying to escape the noise of the world, I would lay into you, Stripes, like you want, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> 32. In his final address to the nation, Dwight D. Eisenhower warned the United States about the military-industrial complex that he saw coming from a mile away, and boy did it come, stripes. Get it all on the record now, get the films, get the witnesses, because somewhere down the track of history, some bastard will get up and say that this never happened. General Dwight D. Eisenhower on future Holocaust denial. You know how many people there are denying the Holocaust right now? And I love it. He said it. Get it on the record. Get yeah. the films and the witnesses. Because they'll, they'll, tr they'll wash it away. Imagine how many things happened on an incredible scale. Where people have lost their lives and people acted unethically. And just because there's nothing, you know what I mean? It's, it's no it's no different from a, a dirty ass cop, you know, taking you into an, a, a room for an interrogation and beating the living shit out of your sorry ass and wiping the records clean. There's no cameras here, homie. There's no recordings. What happened to you? You tripped and fell, you know what I mean? <laughs> Imagine it on a larger scale. Because if, if they won, if the, if the fucking Nazis won, Stripes... You know, they would just teach their children that they, they had, you know, grown in a perfect world where it was just always perfect. I don't know what you're talking about. Sinead O'Connor. Oh, my God. Do you know the story of Sinead O'Connor, Stripes? I don't know who Sinead O'Connor is. Oh, she's a musician. Okay. And she went on SNL and she got tore the fuck apart. Why? For what? Let's read and find out. She went on Saturday Night Live singing a version of her song reworded to reworded to refer to sexual child abuse and here's the thing that she did she ripped up a picture of the pope right and what she meant to do with this is draw attention to the rampant sexual abuse um uh, focused on children in the catholic church now obviously all the catholics who run who run this fucking you know what i'm talking about who run shit they got they got land in america the likes of which would confuse you stripes it, it just outraged the catholic church as you might imagine yeah um but the bottom line was uh she was torn apart by the media and popular culture this was in 1992 while the accusations were already a part of public discourse in ireland and other countries where o'connor was trying to draw attention to it it didn't seem to give a shit until a full decade later in 2002 which is what he's saying is even though obviously the sexual abuse on the minors in the catholic church these little boys right was already, was, was, was already like public knowledge yeah. they they wanted to roast this motherfucker they wanted to crucify this like musician bitch for getting up there and making a statement even if she did it in a way that like honestly honestly the reason that it was a big issue was because the average motherfucker doesn't understand people are fucking stupid do you know what i mean and if you were to make a good movie and put that shit in theaters, your basic audience member, your generic, like, general audience motherfucker would go in there and go, I don't like this at all. Why isn't there a love story? There needs to be more action. What's going on? This scene is boring. What? I don't understand. And they'd walk out and they'd want a refund. In the same way that this display was probably something that went clear over the heads of people. And all they knew how to do was jump on whatever bandwagon as far as an opinion was forming around them. And if people around them were out outraged then they too were outraged just like how now we know that she was trying to call attention to something fucking terrible right that a whole bunch of people then decided was relevant enough for them to give a shit about holy fuck holy fuck this is getting pretty intense the but world oceanate an apology what i want to hear this song with like 
uh, how did it go when she reworked it? What were the lyrics to the song? It wasn't like it was more about the. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can go look it up. You can go look it up on SNL. The, the world just, roasted like, this bitch. Don't worry about the lyrics. You're trying to make this into something that, like, the the message is what's important. Do you get what I'm saying? You're yeah. you're asking me right now to see the bike race where you know after it came out that he was definitely doping. It doesn't thought, matter. I, you know, it doesn't matter when Armstrong was doping. What matters is that he was doping. You know what I mean? And they tried to just put it all about you know, like they they just tried to sweep that shit under the rug, like it was all fine. Shit ain't all right. Not when other people weren't doping. If everybody was doping, then fine, as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? If it's all if it's all fine, then hey, let's all meet each other on like a, a even playing ground here. But fuck me. That shit was not right. And this is even worse. This is scandalous as fuck. You, you got you got people that are supposed to be in some kind of like high tier of a religious organization fucking little boys, dude. You fucking little boys? Subway Jared? Is Subway a chapel now? Uh, man, the worst part about Jared is like wherever he went and was locked up, it was probably so like rich, almost like a federal prison that, you know, he probably wasn't getting fucked in the butt, which is what he deserved. That's what he deserved. Number 31, maybe. The user who guessed the ending to How I Met Your Mother and got downvoted to, to hell. That's funny. Somebody guessed the ending to How I Met Your Mother. We're oh, not going to go into it for spoilers, but you know. How You Met Your Mother ended? how i met your mother ended obviously didn't know well if it hasn't ended then i'm guessing that yeah i think it's over i think it's over please god let that shit be over i didn't i didn't get into it and i don't care (laughs) he'll find other work i'm pretty sure he's involved in some kind of netflix shit right now Um, what you said did you say nah i mean i'm if i am gonna assume anything i think he's probably in theater right now Go ahead and uh, see what Neil Patrick Harris is getting on with because you're. Let's see. There. A series of unfortunate events, a TV series, um, slated for 2016. Um. He's gonna be just fine, Kyle. It's gonna be on Netflix. Production company Netflix. What do you know about anything? Nothing. And I can just fucking assess the world at a glance. This is the way that the wind is blowing, Stripes. If you want to make that money and make it consistently, you don't get a TV show on fucking television. Like, who's watching that shit? 50-year-old motherfuckers that didn't understand that, like, Hillary has all of this shit on lock? So you're getting all Hillary news all the time, round the clock. We'll be right back with some more Hillary after this Hillary commercial. You know, I like puppies. Do Trump like puppies? Brought to you in part by Hillary Clinton Foundation for Puppies. Nigga. Sam Houston, who basically predicted the outcome of the American Civil War when he refused to swear loyalty to the Confederacy. He said this, Let me tell you what is coming. After the sacrifice of countless millions of treasure and hundreds and thousands of lives, you may win southern independence if God be not against you, but I doubt it. I tell you that while I believe in you and the doctrine of the state rights in the North is determined to preserve this union. They are not a fiery, impulsive people as you are, for they live in colder climates. But when they begin to move in a given direction, They move with steady momentum and perseverance of a mighty avalanche. And when I fear, wait, it says what I fear. And what I fear is they will overwhelm the South. And they did. We will overwhelm the South again. (laughs) Sorry. All right, let's go ahead. Um, He predicted it. He predicted it. He predicted it. Um, There's another one. The dude at work that I had to stand next to all night in the 1990s while he said things like, you know the Gulf of Tonkin thing didn't happen, right? You know the CIA killed the the, the democratically elected president of Iran, right? You know Kissinger is wanted for war crimes, right? Yeah, dude, you were right. I was wrong. Here's your moment. Well, there you go, man. Some people know some shit. Wait. What? Wait, you, like, he clearly didn't take him seriously, so you needed to, like, give him a bit of a a, a Californian accent, but you didn't. You wanted a Californian accent. In my Marin County, come on. I need to get, like, a, a contraption sent to your house that you can, like, plug into the internet. And then, like, and then, like, when I press the button, 
it just like it's it's a it's a glove on a, on a stick and it just slaps you no that's rude that's rude people are gonna have a problem with that okay no okay okay no okay okay so like instead of having the slap where it's like swiping you when i press the button we can put it like vertically and then have it like rigged kind of like a catapult and it'll be like a curved hand like in a kind of like a claw form and then you could put a ball in it and then when i press the button It'll send the ball go going, and then I'll be like, "Go get it, stripes! Go get it!" You know what I mean? And then you'll be like, "Ah!" <laughs> you'll go get it. You know what I'm talking about? Just when hey, uh. Let's have a question. What? What are IMA implants? What are IMA implants? Yeah, is it like a certain size or? What do you mean, like what what size of the implants? No, like is that shorthand for A cups? What are you talking about? Are the implants a size, or are those implants for her? It's it's literally just something to trigger her if she watches. Well... But I don't even understand your question. But when do I understand anything that you say? Because, like, boy, are you not fucking phrasing anything properly. No, 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 no. Speak okay. English, Stripes! Okay. It's like the way you said um, a Harambe Sunday is just going to be a Sunday with bananas. So... Yes, because I don't apply thought to these bookmarks. It's a gag, Stripes. So now when you're like, okay, okay, okay. You, you said, what's a Harambe Sunday? So naturally, you knew that I was basically making it up on the spot. A Harambe Sunday, of course, would be uh, a Sunday with bananas. And then you're done, right? Bananas, monkey, you're done. What do you need to put in there? You need to put like the meat of a dead animal in there, Stripes? How, how far you want me to go with the Harambe Sunday? You want you want to like give it to a white kid, and then like <laughs> I don't I don't even know <laughs> I don't even know I don't even know because I don't apply thought to this shit. <laughs> so when you're just like I am implants, huh? Let's hear some more about that. Huh? What's going on in the news? I'm Jay Leno. <laughs> Fucking Jesus Christ! You know, in the middle of a list, <laughs> you know, some people are trying to sleep, and you got me. Um, I'm done, dude. I'm going to get that fucking... It's going to be a slap hand. It's going back to the slap hand. Fuck what people say about how, how mean guy is the stripes. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, my God. I assume it's like... Whoa, 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 whoa. Here's another one, okay? <laughs> the guy who predicted that the Japanese would attack Pearl Harbor, but no one would listen to him, including the general who had who he had told wow he told the general and they wouldn't believe him his job was to translate encrypted messages coming from japan's naval force but he was unable to do so in time despite this he told the general that the japanese would attack pearl harbor because that's what he would do nice dude nice dude Somebody says there was another guy after World War I named Bill Mitchell who predicted that aircraft carriers would tip the scale of naval warfare and that the Japanese Empire would attack the U.S.'s Pacific territories for hegemony in the Pacific. He was court-martialed for his audacious claims. It's crazy, man. One of my favorite quotes in the world is any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic you understand that yeah we I fly do. back in time with a flashlight these niggas are not going to be able to process what the fuck uh, how does you know what goes into that we could disassemble the flashlight and and each individual part would be mystical to these motherfuckers when you apply that to humanity when they're when they're thrown something that they don't have the tools with which to to process man you know, they, they immediately turn hostile. Court-martialed? Jesus, my nigga. And he was right. The poor guy. And what do you do? You know what I mean? It's like an innocent man goes to jail. I know all about that, right, Stripes? When I get out, is there an amount of money that you can reimburse me to give me back my time? To give me get back my lost faith in the fucking system? To make me feel that, like, I can call upon anybody if things go down because people have me in their corner? Get the fuck out of here, man. When the system fails you in that capacity, like, holy shit. What do you do? You want to shut your fucking mouth, Stripes. Even if you write, you shut your fucking mouth. That's the life that you have to live because sometimes being right in the midst of wrong people can get you fucked over. Ain't that some shit? 
if you really have some, uh, I would think, reason to believe to hold your beliefs, I would think you'd still have someone you can depend on, who is also on Stripes, your side. The Even profound, when the profound you. sadness is quite literally that if you can be attacked for something that is unjustifiably false, right? For something that's not true. This isn't a matter of ideals or moral leanings. This isn't like, oh, well, I'd, I feel this way. So, you know, I can't say that I'm on your side. I'm talking about black and white. Did this happen? Did it not happen? Is it there? Is it not there? Is it black? Is it white? indisputable type of shit that because a whole bunch of people for whatever reason just believe that it's one thing even when it can be proved to the contrary and they're acting on the person who believes otherwise and they turn out to be right there is nothing you can do for that person there's nothing you can do to restore how they may feel for the rest of their life and again it's like it's like you're doomed to silence dude and, you know, in certain situations, like, you know too much, you better shut the fuck up. You better shut the fuck up. Freaking crazy. Uh, the people who said that the government was spying on us and monitoring our communications. These are jokes that we see in, like, fucking season five and six episodes of, of The Simpsons. And we laugh and have a good time. You know what I mean? But the NSA is tasked with listening to shit that I'm recording right now before I even press the upload button. Oh me, what the fuck? They're equipping the police right now with fucking shit that can that can jack into what's going on via the Wi-Fi in our houses, and literally, like, without even doing that, they can just sit outside our house and, and figure out what the fuck's going on. They can they can establish um where we are. Not even like heat mapping type shit. Not even like having to bring in satellites that could tell you whether or not a coin is like heads or tails up. You know what I'm talking about? Just just technology that we don't know about so how could we how could we imagine how shit that we don't know might be applied in scenarios right under our noses let's keep it going baby tech support guy can see what you're typing before you hit enter right that was a fun thing that we did on the list that never ended up being published but i think the the stream for that list is there because i was just like fuck it it was such a long list and it wasn't gonna going anywhere <laughs> marshal ferdinand falk the commander of the french army during the first world war was present at the signing of the treaty of versailles on 28th of june 1919 you know what happened then do you no i was yawning what happened the assassination as it was being signed he declared this is not a peace it is an armistice for mm. 20 years 20 years and 64 days later Germany invaded Poland and the second world war began oh boy Sinead O'Connor, she was demonized in the 90s for calling out the child abuse in the Catholic Church. Turns out she was Wait. really, really right about it. Yes, we have seen it before. Hmm. I guess it was just phrased. Oh my God, I'm so glad. This is, it's phrased more uh, concisely. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she deserves honestly two places on this fucking list because nothing is going to rebuild the career of a, of a musician who may may have been honestly a little more talented than half of the niggas kicking around on the radio right now not because i'm an old man and i have a problem with niggas like on the radio because they stupid and they suck but because none of them are musicians maybe some of them are talented performers you know what i mean fucking mm -hmm. bieber can jump up on stage and dance around like a fucking clown and make you want to pay to see this nigga in concert but sit this motherfucker down with an instrument you know what i mean is he Adele? No. Is he John Legend? No. Is he Alicia Keys? No. Are they going to regale you in a capacity where you're just moved musically because they understand what being in tune and creating music as opposed to singing a song is? Don't fucking talk to anybody about who understands music or is inclined musically about what is going on as far as popular music is concerned. And here they are tearing this hoe to shreds. You know? Because they she did something that they didn't get. I love it. Somebody wrote that. People didn't get it. This is me calling out the stupid people, but that's the bottom line. Niggas didn't get it. So what could they do is get angry. Most thought she was just trying to be offensive. They thought she was just pulling a Madonna 
So fuck that girl. It was a few years until the story of the abuse landed in the U.S. It was ten years. Yeah, a decade. It wasn't a few years. Um. Ooh, stupid people make you mad. Stupid people make me mad. Yeah, you said this list was. You just wanted to get this list over with, but it seems everything upsets you, and right, it should. It's not like I, I'm trying to get the list over with. I'm just like, fuck, man. You know how he did. I get that. Stupid people are my only trigger. Stupid people are my only trigger. And in real life scenarios, what can you do but walk the fuck away? You don't have the. Uh, you don't have the luxury of allowing a stupid person to get you riled the fuck up because they stupid, nigga. And who's stupid if you letting a stupid person rile you up? Walk the fuck away. Walk the fuck away. The CIA that warned about invading Iraq. They said that toppling Saddam could lead to a dangerous period of internal voice violence and provide a boost to terrorists. But they were seemingly ignored. Yeah. And here come ISIS, though. Yeah, I'm talking about. So here's another one. Peter Norman. He's a white guy in that he's the white guy in that Olympic photo of two black athletes. Oh, the one who do the black power salute. That's a very uh, famous, you know, it's a very strong, striking picture. And all you need to know about it for the sake of being concise is, you know, black people have been put down in this damn country for a long time. And this wasn't that far, like, away from slavery to where, hey, um, the segregation was pretty ridiculous still. So, you know, not only did they win, but they saluted black power. You know what I'm talking about? Which, you know. Wait, whatever. is this an article? I mean, the fuck, fuck the article. This is more about the damn um, picture. But they're saying that he's the white guy in that picture. What about him, though? This is what we're getting to. He's the white guy in that Olympic photo of the two black athletes doing the black power salute. In the photo, he is wearing a badge. He decided to wear it after noticing Smith and Carlos were wearing theirs. It reads, Olympic Project for Human Rights. A group of Olympians in support of human rights. Who can you can only assume is, is equality. Human rights. When he came home to Australia, he was hated. This poor motherfucker. He Why? was not invited to another Olympi Olympics, even though he was qualified. He couldn't find steady work, so he worked as a gym teacher and a butcher before an injury caused him to con contract gangrene. He became depressed and an alcoholic. He was offered a pardon to return to the sport, a move which would have also secured him a job if he commended, he condemned his fellow athletes. He refused. He died in 2006, and at his funeral, Smith and Carlos were pole bearers. In 2012, the Australian Parliament issued a formal apology for what was done to him. These racist assholes. Fuck Australia. Just as racist as the rest of the world. That is sick, man. That is sick for standing with some black dudes because it's you know you know let's be let's be human. We're all human. We're, we're not so different. Uh, the formal apology. I couldn't see why black why a black man couldn't drink the same water from a water fountain. Take the same bus to go to the same school as a white man. There was a social injustice that I couldn't do anything about from where I was. But I certainly hated it. It has been said that sharing my silver medal with that incident on the victory days detracted from my performance <laughs> on the contrary i have to confess i was rather proud to be a part of it look some people can go down in history as living and dying as upstanding human beings a luxury that so many people by choice refuse every fucking day fuck some of these assholes let's check out the comments here show comments loading what a tragic bullshit, that poor dude, says the top comment. Somebody else says it's tragic in the sense that the conservative media, which was, you know, predominant media at the time, and conservative politicians shunned him, but did have a great deal of support at the time for the rest of his life. <gasps> oh, boy. Jose Canseco, the guy who wrote a book detailing the Major League Baseball steroid use. Everyone went nuts and blamed him for trying to make a quick buck writing his book 10 years later almost the entire era 
juiced. Jose was right. Somebody says the worst part is he's still a massive asshole. Well, <laughs> being told that you're making shit up or trying to make a quick buck when you're trying to like risk your life to come out and say some shit, you know what I mean? You never know how people will react when uh, when you take something that they wanted to keep a secret and, and bring it out. There you go. Nikita Khrushchev. Khrushchev, most likely, on the U.S. going into Vietnam. Why take the risk? It will drop into our lap like a rotten apple. Ooh. Then 15 years later, they do the same exact um, thing, expecting different results. America, baby. Fuck yeah. Well, me, I was fired and wow, somebody says me. I was fired in 2015 for telling my employer that their welding practices were unacceptable and that I was legally obligated to report it. By fired, I mean I was uh, on probationary contract and was given no more work until it ran out a month later. A year later, the Navy had to pull the subs from active service, and they're out millions of dollars in rework and repair. They're lucky nobody died. <sighs> I haven't been able to find work since, and I'm possibly going to lose my house. That's probably a coincidence. Probably. What an interesting story. His, his username is NSA Chatbot. <sighs> Stripes, I am burning up trying to record in here and not have too much background noise. I'm sorry. Jesus. The dingo ate my baby woman. Truly a sad story. You've heard of this one, right? I know about it, yeah. Yeah. Lindy and Michael Chamberlain, one of the worst miscarriages of justice and the darkest chapters in Australian legal history. My mom was convinced she did it, and so was most of the country. So for those who don't know, a couple were camping with their infant child in the outback. A dingo, like a native wild dog, took the infant child and devoured it. The woman was accused of killing her child and put through a grueling public trial by media, where basically everybody over in Australia was like, bitch, you did it, bitch, you did it, bitch, you did it, you did it. Why are you fucking lying? What do you mean a dingo ate your baby? You killed your baby. Kyle is not funny. So I'm making accents like this fucking funny. Like I'm I'm fucking sweating up a store. I'm like turning into a pool of, of dingo juice. Can you eat this one then? <sighs> Says part of the problem was she was heavily dosed with sedatives because of the stress of losing her baby. Therefore she didn't have normal emotional responses, so people thought she was clearly reacting like a grieving mother should she wasn't reacting like a grieving mother should this probably one of maybe the, the first huge trial by media event in in the country don't you love that like a grieving mother should isn't this something yeah. that like you don't understand and i right. hope you never understand no i hope you never understand what i'm about to explain um this happens with mothers a lot actually um because all certain old people absorb is TV and movies and that's how they view the world because they don't really have too many real friends I don't mean this in a rude way sometimes being a parent just makes you like a shut-in that observes the uh, the world through a window um, the thing is a lot of us are shut-ins that observe the world through a window but at least the windows fucking clean homie do you know what I mean Whereas their window is very smudged and they're making out certain things. And the only thing that they're getting crystal clear are TV and depictions of people in movies. So they almost expect people to carry themselves in the in the manner of a two-dimensional motherfucker you'd catch on a sitcom. Or in, in some kind of romantic comedy, nigga. Like, not everybody is the same. Not everybody reacts the same way to certain things. So literally establishing, oh, you're not reacting the way that I would in this scenario. So you must not be going through what you're saying that you're going through. Because if it were me, I wouldn't be reacting like that. You're not reacting the way that a grieving mother should. Nigga, who the fuck are you to say who, how anybody should be reacting to something that A, you probably haven't been through. B, you're probably never going to go through. C even if you were to go through it what makes you think that you and this person are so similar that you guys would in encounter and interpret and and demonstrate an emotional reaction in the same capacity d stripes d stripes y'all have nothing in the way of a similar upbringing you know what i mean y'all yeah. didn't learn the same things y'all didn't have the same parents 
and even if you were twins not even even if you were raised in, in a sterile environment and made to do the exact same things trying to uh, establish or predict how a person will react under certain stimulation is nuts because everybody is different and we can make blanket statements but fuck me man i really hate that that bitch was doped out of her mind probably just to stop her from killing herself because everybody was like you killed your baby when a fucking animal came and and ate this infant kid holy shit moving on man that's another sad one man seattle's former mayor mike mcginn ran on a platform that included the idea that a huge tunneling project was poorly thought out and Seattle would be on the hook for when the project went over budget. Now the tunnel boring machine, Bertha, has been stuck under downtown for months. The project is way over budget and has run long. The whole thing is a giant mess and he was absolutely right. What's going on with that right now, someone asks. I used to live next to the Seattle Center and I worked in Pioneer Square. So I got to the, I got to deal with the traffic disaster that Mercer turned into um, and during the day. Um, the constant rumbling caused by Bertha, we were directly over that path the tunnel was taking. When I left, it had been stalled for months. Is it still stuck? Let's load a response. man moving on <laughs> i just watched the big short last night so the handful of guys who predicted the financial crisis of 0708 a few years before it actually happened imagine carrying the knowledge that millions of people are about to lose their homes and there's nothing you can do about it there's a great scene where two of the younger guys figure out um a way to make a huge amount of money from the knowledge and start dancing around in joy only to have brad pitt's character yell at them to stop celebrating since they're going to be profiting from people basically being thrown on out on the street pretty sobering information um you know if this were real life though um brad pitt's character would come in and be like stop celebrating you're you're gonna be profiting from people on the street <laughs> You can't properly celebrate without some champagne, cork pop. You know what I'm talking about? Like they, they, what? That is a prerequisite for half of these corporations making money, man. What? Gotta feel some people on the street. The e economic bubble that would like house houses, right? Man, it, it's it, it's a big bubble. It's a big bubble that burst. And a lot of things went uh went skaboobly woobly, you know. In many ways, we're still uh, we're still trying to pick up the pieces now, Stripes. This is more a personal example, but it's still relevant, I believe. My sister would definitely get this award, as she saw red flags with Amway before me or our parents. Amway? What's that? Our dad was introduced to the MLM um, and subsidiary Quickstar, now called Amway Global, by a co-worker, and thought it would be a good way to make money on the side. We attended several seminars, sounds like a pyramid scheme, meetings, sounds like a pyramid scheme, and an event known as Free Enterprise Day, sounds like a Jehovah's Witness cult, and met other business owners. Good grief, it was a genuine cult. Oh, how weird that I said that, on par with Scientology. Complete with brainwashing, chants such as freedom, awesome, and flush that job, and bait and switch tactics. However, only my sister recognized something vile about it from the beginning. Why? Why only your sister? When she repeatedly said how creepy the people and the events were, she also cleverly asked dad to help her with her math homework by using an Amway venture as an example of how much money one can make. Depressingly, the answer was a very low amount. Eventually, as we got exposed to more of the cultishness of Amway and heard of more horror stories, we realized how right my sister was. Look, you know what we're all dying for? Horror Scientology stories. But people are too scared to talk shit about Scientology because, like, they're watching. Scientology is about as strong as the NSA because... They got the money to make it happen. The famous people are Publicly, Scientologists. They're just a joke, so it doesn't really matter. Just because they have a bad they... reputation doesn't mean shit, Stripes. They don't have a reputation to stand on. Nixon was a, was a joke, and he became president. Does that does that ring any bells? Who's a joke right now that, that has a chance at becoming president? 
both of these clowns, nigga. Hillary and Trump. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Jesus Christ. Hillary the clown. Honk, honk. Hey, kids. <laughs> That was a pretty lazy, crusty laugh. My parents apparently high school. What? Oh, Wait, my parents. Think, what? I don't think you finished the last story, though. It was like a, a single phrase still there. So what? Fuck it. It was a cult, and they got out of it thanks to some dumb bitch. You didn't bitch. know that? You didn't read the like them coming out of the cult. Oh, my God. But even for then, a nine-year-old, it was nothing short of amazing. We quit venture and ended up saving tons of money from being lost in a financial void. Done. My parents, apparently high school isn't the hardest time of your life, study hard now or play catch up later. And those girls, you'll forget about them once you find your wife. Pfft. Like everybody's trying to find a wife, nigga. Like what kind of basic ass life are you living with your fucking sweater vest and, you know, button up shirt, khaki pants, talking about great weather we're having, eh, Mitch? <laughs> I hope it stays this way. You know, I love it when I can <laughs> fucking, I'm dying. I'm dying just thinking about these people in their basic ass lives. Material things don't really matter. Nigga, 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 nigga. Talk, talk to me about some more obvious shit, please. The guy who warned that the O-rings would fall. What? Alan McDonald. Several people below have also said Roger Boy's Jolly. As for the story couldn't get worse, he actually thought the rockets would explode on the pad. Oh no, they're talking about, they're talking about uh, like rockets. That yeah. went up and then exploded. That's scary. Look, the towers are gone now. Ooh, talking about them twin towers. Reduced to bloody rubble, along with all the hopes of for peace in our time. In the United States or uh, any other country, make no mistake about it, we are at war now with somebody. And we'll stay at war with the mysterious enemy for the rest of our lives. It will be a religious war. A sort of Christian jihad fueled by religious hatred and led by merciless fanatics on both sides. It will be guerrilla warfare on a global scale with no front lines and no identifiable enemy. Osama bin Laden may be a primitive figurehead or even dead uh, for all we know, but whoever put those all-American jet planes loaded with all-American fuel into the Twin Towers, and the Pentagon did it with chilling precision and accuracy. The second one was a dead-on bullseye, straight into the middle of the skyscraper. Nothing, even George Bush's 30, 350 billion Star Wars missile defense system could have prevented Tuesday's attack. Well, if people didn't want it to happen, it, it might not have happened. It's as simple as that. I'm sure people are listening to this that may feel in some way close to 9-11 that, that just object to what I'm saying, nigga. But people knew what was going down before it went down. And if you don't believe me, look that shit up. People knew that this was going to happen before it happened. I'm not saying who did it. I'm not saying Bush was behind it. I'm not saying it was for money or, there, you know, what reasons they were going into it. Because none of us will ever know. But the bottom line was, niggas knew. <laughs> there are phone calls literally like before this shit went down where people were telling people not to fly where people were telling people you know uh i think i think there was actually like uh things oh. removed from the building yeah, at one point they were removing money like uh no some people put money into the insurance i'm not even talking about yeah you're right you're right that's a very very popular thing where people took out um claims specifically regarding terrorist attack on those damn buildings niggas fucking knew and that's the bottom line i don't care about any of this shit any of this conspiracy crap the fact of the matter is some people had foreknowledge of these events and if some people knew important people knew the people who needed to know knew and that's all that we can really say about 9 11 and it's sad and i really don't like thinking about it so let's continue here ernest hemingway claimed that the fbi was spying on him and you know this fbi spying on everybody nigga so this man was right he was deemed crazy and was then institutionalized Ooh, the sad stories begin where people getting sent to the crazy house the insane asylum to where they can get like assassinated and then people go well it looks like a suicide johnson Let's get out of here. Sprinkle some crack on this guy. Undergoing horrible shock therapy that ultimately ended in suicide, quote unquote. Turns out the FBI was indeed following him. Oh my God. People are asking, do they know why? And somebody says that he lived in Cuba for a while. He met Castro. He'd previously reported on the Spanish Civil War while staying with leftists. He was thought to be a little too close to the commies as opposed to like flat out aiding the commies like we fucking did oh reagan 
I'm sorry. <laughs> Former Army Chief of Staff Eric Shin Shinseki. Eric Shinseki. Why does that name seem familiar to me? He made the mistake of speaking truth to power when telling Congress that something in the order of several hundred thousand soldiers would be needed to secure a post-war Iraq if a U.S. invasion were to happen. Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld and Deputy Se Secretary of Defense Wolfowitz turned him into a punching bag on television over it. Oh, God, man. S -s -s Scapegoats. This guy thought the FBI had installed a tracking device on his vehicle. It turns out that he they did. Holy shit. His discovery comes in the wake of a recent ruling by the 9th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals saying it's legal for law enforcement to secretly place a tracking device on a suspect's car without getting a warrant. Even if the car is parked in a private driveway. Nigga, what? They don't have a warrant to come on the property. They don't need a warrant to put some shit on your car. Somebody else says, just so you know, the most recent Supreme Court ruling on GPS trackers essentially reversed that. But it doesn't fucking matter because the law, the law uh, operates outside of itself. <laughs> the law is only the law when it benefits the law, bro. Or benefits the money. This late... Somebody says this comment is late, but the Japanese mayor in the 1970s who built a huge seawall and was actually laughed at and criticized by the general populace for wasting such funds. The seawall would go on to protect the town in 2011 when a tsunami threatened and took out most of the surrounding towns. Well, there you go, Stripes. I, I, I hope he lived long enough to get the last laugh. I don't think so, no. Most people in power are pretty old by the time they get there. Yeah, you're right. Richard Stallman. Five years ago, we would have never thought computer manufacturers would put bloat water in their BOS. What? Yeah, might as well be speaking French to me. BIOS in their BIOS. Hmm. Bloatware. Lenovo was caught putting vulnerabilities into their hardware again in 2015. Wow. It's me? Wow. Winston Churchill knew very early on that Britain was going to have to go to war with the Nazis and that the Munich Agreement was a ploy. Luckily, he was able to convince many higher-ups that he was right. While Chamberlain was celebrating peace in our time, Britain's factories were already roll tooling up for war. When Munich agreed, when the Munich Agreement was signed, Britain was making about 250 warplanes a month. When Germany invaded France less than two years later, the number was over 1,500. Somebody says the scale of this war will always astound and baffle me. My God. Somebody named Harry Markopoulos, who figured out that Madoff uh, the Madoff Ponzi scheme and delivered it fully documented to SEC. This was years before the scheme fell apart in 2008. There's a book called No One Would Listen. Oh my god. That was also made into a movie. These poor men. But at least they didn't end up dead, man. At least they didn't end up so high priority that they were put into a loony bin literally just to throw a blanket over their credibility to the rest of the world. You know what I mean? He's in a crazy house, you know? And then they, they kill him and say it's suicide. Rick Rescoria, a retired army officer who is the chief of security um, for Morgan Stanley in the World Trade Center. We back on it. He foresaw a terrorist attack on the towers and created a very thorough evacuation procedure should such an event occur. He wrote a report about the structural integrity of the towers and gave it to port authority, but it was ignored. On 9-11, he ignored the initial instructions to stay put and orchestrated the evacuation of 2,500 plus employees. I can't do this next part justice, so I'm copying straight from the Wikipedia. Rescoria had boosted morale among his men in Vietnam by singing Cornish songs from his youth. And now he did the same in the stairwell, singing songs like one based on the Welsh song, Men of Harlech. Men of Cornwall, stop your dreaming. Can't you see their spear points gleaming? See their warriors pennants streaming to this battlefield. Men of Cornwall, stand ye steady. It cannot be ever said 
ye for battle we're not ready, stand and never yield. Between songs, Rescoria called his wife, telling her, stop crying. I have to get these people out safely. If something should happen to me, I want you to know, I've never been happier. You made my life. After successfully evacuating most of Morgan Stanley's 2,687 employees, he went back into the building. When one of his colleagues told him he too had to evacuate the World Trade Center, Rescoria replied, as soon as I make sure everyone is out. He was last seen on the 10th floor, heading upward, shortly before the South Tower collapsed. His remains were never found. Rescorio was declared dead three weeks after the attacks. There you go. Edmund Halley, in 1705, applying historical astronomy methods, he published a synopsis Astronomia Cometicae, which stated his belief that the comet sightings of 1456, 1531, 1607, and 1682 related to the same comet. Haley, which he predicted would return in 1758. Haley did not live to witness the comet's return, but when it did, the comet became generally known as Haley's Comet. That's, that's awesome. The Redditor that claimed to see Mark Zuckerberg taking an elevator up to Oculus Rift's door with no way to prove it, so no one believed him <laughs> until Facebook <laughs> bought Oculus Rift shortly after. The user's name is U3 Wolf Mountain. Here he is. Oh. Care to comment? Asks another user, summoning him. Yes, I shall comment. He's been upvoted. They gave him a little bit of justice oh here. God. And a little bit of gold. That's I don't think I really deserve an award, but I'll accept <laughs> one nonetheless. I did get shut down pretty quickly when I originally posted that comment. The Oculus community is pretty tight-knit and was of the belief that the Palmer Lucky guy um, was like a young Gabe Newell who would keep his new company private and forge the path to VR glory. So when I uttered something about Zuckerberg, I was deemed a heretic. Soon there were pitchfork mobs outside my house. They kidnapped my newborn kitten and held her hostage in a pile of fedoras. Come on now. Luckily, I was able to follow a trail of neckbeard sheddings to their location and save her. It was quite an ordeal. I've when had the, enough. Please don't give When the this company guy was bought by Facebook, I logged to a metric ton of comments, a few calling me God. I liked this idea, but I quickly realized I wasn't God. I did use my moment of Reddit fame to shamelessly promote a cat video I had posted a few years earlier. I suppose I should stay true to my character and shamelessly promote a video I literally posted an hour again of me telling the Reddit genie anti-joke. Oh God, look at this guy. No mas. Look at this guy. No mas. He's your new husband. Excuse me? Right, so there's these three guys, right? And they're walking on a beach. And one of them sees this lamp sticking out of the sand. So he's like, hey, you guys don't think that's a genie lamp, do you? Look, this joke's gonna be too long for me. I need something short and quick, you know what I mean? Like Kyle videos, you know what I'm talking about? You get the joke there? Yeah, they're short and quick. Look, I'm the one fucking melting in this box trying to record right now. You don't know anything about my laugh. My laugh! Gastric ulcers were thought to be caused by stress and spicy food. Dr. Barry Marshall thought it might be caused by a germ. He intentionally infected himself with the bacteria and got sick from it, and then cured himself with antibiotics. It earned him a Nobel Prize. I got stomach ulcer by germs. They said... They said it was because I drank tab water. Um, well that's what you get for living so close to Mexico and drinking tap water, you maniac. I was eight years old, thank you very much. I haven't drank anything but bottled water since. Your mama should have let you know, Little Stripes, if you drink the water, you will die. Don't drink the water, Stripes. <laughs> oi, ay, ay, ay. Don't drink the water. My waiter at the Mexican restaurant, when he says plate hot, he means plate hot. Wow. <laughs> Can't be that hot. You know what I mean? Ignaz Semel, Semelels, Semelways was a Hungarian doctor who suggested doctors needed to wash their hands more often. He noticed that women were getting 
puerperal fever at an alarming rate at Vienna General Hospital because doctors were going from handling cadavers directly directly to delivering babies without washing their hands. He suggested that doctors wash their hands in solution of chlorinated lime. Naturally, he was scoffed at. Nobody took him seriously. He suffered a mental breakdown and wound up being committed to an asylum at age 47 when he died after being badly beaten by fucking guards. Oh, God. His findings were later confirmed by Louis Pasteur. Confirmation of germ theory and Joseph Lister's pioneering work in the use of antiseptics and surgery. Some of the ways didn't understand why the cadaver handling led to women dying in childbirth, but he was right that the doctors needed to up their hygiene game. How amazing is that? When you can we can figure well, out yeah. something's wrong, but you can't prove it. All he asks her is for people to wash their hands. Where are you going with this? No, oh, I wasn't going anywhere. Look, I'd love to do some kind of waka waka riff session at the end of this when I'm actually melting. I'm like dying here. <sighs> so we should end the video. Do you have anything to say, Stripes? This was a pretty depressing list. Um, well, it can't be. It also be. seemed to like get under your skin a whole lot. Let's go check your Twitter. We should do that. Um, what do you mean it got under my skin? Nobody gets under my skin. Just stupid people. I thought we've established that. Oh. Um. Makes oh, sense. Oh. Hey, look. Uh, Stripes apparently has sticky the message about how you know she wants people to ask her stuff at curiouscat.me slash striped goon. So I'm not saying that you should go over there and flood that with, you know, something stupid. But, I mean, some of you were already thinking about doing it, you know. You guys have a great whatever time I'm uploading this. It's like 11.50 a.m. for me, so this will probably be up by, like, I don't know, um, 12 o'clock? Noon? For me, anyway. God, we're talking about the time? I'll see you guys later. Um, yeah. Bye!